Hi guys, am I audible? Are we live? Type yes in the chat box so that I'll know that we are live. Good morning, guys. Those of you who are joining, just give a response to the chat box so that I'll know who all have joined the live session. Good morning, Aparna. Let's just wait for another probably 30 seconds, 30, 45 seconds. Some more people might be trying to join us. Hi, Kabir. Hi, Vani. Hi Sampath. MSD, Sravani, Sipana, Mahendra Varma, great. So some more people are joining us. That's awesome. Good morning, Bhargav. Sai Notham, Antara. Great. So I'll uh, quickly take you through the format of today's discussion. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with certain basics, uh, the theory of paragraph jumbles. I have discussed the theory in detail in the concept sessions, but I thought I'll quickly take you through that. I will not spend too much time on it. I will not go into the depths of it. That by itself will take uh, around half an hour if you have to get in the depths of it. So I'm going to quickly take you through it. I've discussed about these things in detail in the concept session of paragraph jumbles. The reason I thought I will quickly take you through this is a few days back, I went through one of the videos on YouTube where someone was explaining how to solve paragraph jumbles. And uh, I saw something strange. So th there was advice given where you could actually read the first half of the sentence and solve paragraph jumbles with 100% accuracy. I was wondering why would you read the first half of the sentence and leave the second half? Now, those kind of voodoo magic will not work for cat uh, paragraph jumbles, trust me. I mean, if you want to try it, you can you know, probably take 10 to 15 paragraph jumbles question and apply that and see how many of them will actually work. Someone could even show it on actual cat questions that you know you can just read the first half and solve. But it will not work on all questions. So I want to disabuse you of any such wrong notions about solving paragraph jumbles. It will not work that way. Because sometimes you will see that towards the end of the sentence you have a link which gets connected to the first half. Right. So if I keep on reading the first half of the sentences, I'll, I'll start losing all the links which are going to come towards the end. So uh, paragraph jumbles can be solved with good accuracy. I would not say 100% accuracy because that, that will be slightly illogical. You won't be able to do that all the time. But very high accuracy you can get in paragraph jumbles. If you follow certain basic rules and you remain you know, really uh, aware of what's happening in that question. Okay. So let's quickly go through the basic uh, funda that you should know. So some four points are there if you which if you keep in mind you will stand to benefit in getting very high accuracy so first is try to identify the opening sentence because a lot of sentences will start in a way that you will be able to identify okay this cannot open like although this has been said or something like that okay however this is how so these things don't generally open a sentence so opening sentence you can when you read initially you will be able to find out which is the opening sentence although you'll not be able to solve the entire paragraph jumbles okay identify mandatory pair sometimes you'll be able to see that there are some two sentences which have to come one after the other so try to identify those kind of mandatory pairs you might be able to find out let's say two mandatory pairs sometimes that will help you to put the structure together however you'll have to identify how they are going to link through but identifying mandatory pairs is one of the ways in shortlisting what could be your final order identify transition words like however in spite of and so on because these words will tell you what could come before and what would come after those kind of sentences so identify transition words pronoun antecedents this is also something very simple okay when the statement starts with i have given an example here in that sen, uh, in that session so you have a statement which says mr brown and then you have another statement where he says he was so it's very clear that the mr brown statement should come before you can start using he as a pronoun to refer to mr brown so these kind of pronoun antecedents will also give you a cue as to what could be the order of different sentences so these are certain things that you should keep in your mind 
and certain thumb rules that you can have let's quickly go through them as well again i'm not going to spend too much time on this i'm quickly going to take you through this so general before particular before particular statements come can come the general statement should come okay and nouns before pronouns you already seen definitions before discussion so if a new concept is being taken up for discussion and there is a sentence which is defining that new concept definitely the defining sentence should come before you can get into the discussion of the particular concept list before list explanations when you see that there are some sentences which are explaining about some particular terms and there is one sentence which is describing the particular terms okay for instance if it is given like the key aspects to concentrate to improve indian economy or agriculture manufacturing and services and then you have a statement about agriculture you have a statement about manufacturing you have a statement about services these individual statements about agriculture manufacturing and services should come after that introductory statement about these three has been given so list will come before list explanations are taken list order is generally followed in list explanations the same example that we did right so if a point is given where it speaks of to improve indian economy one has to concentrate on let's say agriculture manufacturing and services and you have individual statements on agriculture manufacturing and services now you got to look at the list order you have agriculture coming first then manufacturing then services a similar order will be preferred in describing each of those individual list items as well respect chronology uh, it doesn't happen in a lot of questions but in questions where you see dates given right in 1860 this happened in 1890 this happened 1915 this happened more often than not this chronology will be respected when you're trying to get the order okay means you put 1860 first 1990 next and then something related to 1950 first again i'm not saying that will always happen more often than not you got to keep this in mind that chronology has to be respected as long as it's not violating the logic completely cause before effect before you can ex explain the effect of something the cause of that effect should be explained if you have two statements where one is speaking of cause the other one is speaking of effect the cause one has to precede the effect statement so these are certain things you can keep in mind now let's get into the questions and see how we can connect all this theory and try to solve the questions okay the most important aspect is connections you got to identify connections between sentences to weave them together so let's uh, go through the questions so the format is going to be like this i'm going to show you a question we're going to take up 90 seconds to solve those questions okay only 90 seconds some questions might take around two minutes but i'm going to give you only 90 seconds so 90 seconds per question so it will flash on the screen that there is a countdown timer going down from 90 seconds at the end of 90 seconds we'll start discussing the question but before that if you get your order you can put your order in the chat box i'll also get to know how many of you are able to solve it correctly and how quickly you're able to solve so that's going to be the format of today's discussion we have five questions to discuss today uh, some solid concepts are there to be learned let's go forward and see how we can solve those questions okay so this is the first question for today you can start attempting that i am going to start the timer for the same If you happen to get your answer, you can put that in the chat box, those of you who are in the live session.
you already got a response Great, the time is up. Let's discuss this. Okay, good number of responses have come. Let's see whether uh, those responses are correct or is there any correction that you need to make to your approach. Some correspond to racial divisions. Not a great way to start. Some correspond, some somewhat correspond. Right, some correspond to racial divisions means some what correspond to racial division. So this doesn't look like a great way to start. Uh, informal settlements made of corrugated iron sheets gleam in the sun. You can start that way. Informal settlements made of corrugated iron sheets gleam in the sun and many four lane highways have no sidewalks or bicycle paths reflecting the government's ambition to pretend that the vast majority of city's residents don't walk everywhere. Invisible lines divide Nairobi in absurd ways. That could be a great starter. Invisible lines divide Nairobi in absurd ways. There are entire apartment complexes owned by third or fourth generation Asian families who refuse to rent to black residents in predominantly white neighborhoods with their own schools and clubs hidden behind steel gates. Other lines reveal class divisions. Okay, now when I read this, other lines reveal class divisions. I'm reminded of some correspond to racial divisions. Right? You generally go with that, right? Some do this, others do that. So, some correspond to racial divisions, other lines reveal class divisions. So, this other lines reveal class divisions should definitely come after some correspond to racial divisions. And invisible lines divide Nairobi in absurd ways. So, you speak about invisible lines dividing in absurd ways. Some correspond to this, others correspond to that. That kind of gives me a structure of how this thing could go forward. So let's put it down like this. Invisible lines divide. Some of them correspond to something. Others correspond to something like this. So I'm going to put three which speaks of invisible lines. And then some correspond to racial divisions of Nairobi's apartheid past. When black men were forbidden from moving through the city without wearing a pass around their neck and black women were prohibited from living in the city altogether. This can be followed up with one. Three can be followed up with one. Now let's see, uh, what is this? Informal settlements made of corrugated iron sheets gleam. See, this spoke about apartheid and black men and we are looking at racial divisions as of now. After three in one, we are looking at racial division. So black men make sense for racial division and all that, right? Black men were forbidden. Let's look at the second one. Informal settlements made of corrugated iron sheets gleam in the sun and many four lane high highways have no sidewalks or bicycle paths reflecting the government's ambition to pretend that vast majority of the city's residents do not walk everywhere. Okay, so this doesn't look like a racial division to me because informal settlements of corrugated iron is this peak of iron sheets this speak of uh, probably people who are not very rich right and let's see what is there in fourth one the there are entire apartment complexes owned by third or fourth generation Asian families who refuse to rent to black residents which is again related to our racial point right so what we can do is three followed by one which speaks of the racial divisions and four is continuing to explain about the racial divisions because it's speaking of how black residents were treated. So I love three, one followed by four. So racial divisions is over. Then comes the other lines reveal class divisions. Five. And this is speaking of a class division. When you say class division, see here you are speaking about poor people, right? Informal settlements made of corrugated iron sheets. And many four lane highways have no sidewalks or bicycle paths reflecting the government's ambition to pretend that vast majority of city's residents don't walk everywhere. So government is pretending that a vast majority. So this is speaking of class divisions. 
okay vast majority don't use it so the government is pretending like that that vast majority of the city's residents don't walk everywhere the government tends to pretend as if not many people use that and there are actually people using that so this speaks of class division so 3 1 4 5 and 2 would be the order i'm just going to give you the flow of logic here so 3 introduces that there are invisible lines that divide so it is about lines that divide three introduces lines that divide and one introduces the racial division so one introduces the racial division four further explains the racial division this explains the racial division in the context of black men this further explains about how black residents were treated so this these two are about one particular kind of division that is statement one and statement four are about one particular kind of division and then statement five comes in with other lines so statement five comes with other lines and that introduces class division two is further explaining class division that is the flow of logic here so the best order we can have for this is three one four five and two so that's the best order which we put things together did anybody get this question right three one four five two i think not okay type one if you're clear with why three one four five two is the best order for this question if you're clear with that so this is the uh, link okay three starts with lines that divide one initiates racial division four explains further on racial division five speaks about other lines two speaks about other lines and introduces class division two speaks about class division great let's move to the next question okay try this one you have 90 seconds to attempt this We've already got some responses here. And some of you have got it right, which is really good. Great, great. I'm seeing a lot of right responses. It's good. Let's discuss this. In contrast, the comparatively short-lived, okay, not a great way to start. When you say in contrast, in contrast to what? So not a great way to start. Lettering was applied to many objects, a very general uh, way of telling things. So it can start what uh, we are looking at. Lettering was applied to many objects. Also generally ephemeral, not a great way to start. Also generally ephemeral, you would not uh, start a, a paragraph like that. On a wax tablet, a text could be drafted and then removed by heating, leaving the surface smooth and ready to be reused. By itself, it can start. But lettering was applied to many objects. 
looks more general than speaking about on a wax tablet. So I would go with lettering was applied to many objects as the opening statement here. So let's start with two. And on a wax tablet, a text could be drafted and then removed by heating, leaving the surface smooth and ready to be reused. Also generally ephemeral. See, when you see here, they have given on a wax tablet, text could be drafted and then removed by heating, leaving the surface smooth and ready to be reused. Right, which means, just give me a minute. Yeah, which means what you are writing on that is not going to stay there for a long time. Also generally ephemeral. Ephemeral means what? Short-lived, right? So in statement four, we are speaking about something that is short-lived because a text could be drafted and then removed by heating, leaving the surface smooth and ready to be reused. So the text on that is short-lived. And then also generally ephemeral. So you should have already spoken about something ephemeral, then this will make a lot of sense. And we have spoken about something ephemeral in statement four. So I can, put statement 4 and follow it up with statement 3 as is also will make sense in that case because statement 4 itself is speaking of something ephemeral. Ephemeral means something that is short-lived, right? So also generally ephemeral in its intended use was the birch bark on which texts were written usually as on wax. Oh, another clue here, usually as on wax and you have on a wax tablet. Now what more do you need? So 4 should be followed by three with a stylus in Eastern Europe from the Baltic to Ukraine. In contrast, so we spoke about two things of ephemeral nature where text is imprinted. In contrast, a comparatively short-lived practice in Viking lands. Now keep in mind that the short-lived is not about the text, it is about the practice. The practice was short-lived. So in contrast and short lived, you should not get confused because already we spoke about ephemeral. In contrast is given and then again short, list, short lived is given, but that short lived is about the practice. So in contrast, short lived practice in Viking lands in the late 10th and 11th centuries of engraving and coloring runes on stones was consciously monumental. Means that is not short lived. If you say that it's consciously monumental, probably they're keeping it for a pretty long time. So that's why we can justify that in contrast coming after speaking about ephemeral things because in contrast these things were consciously monumental means they're going to remain for a long time as was the tradition of epigraphy in the Latin West. So 2, 4, 3 and 1 would be the best order in this case. The flow of ideas if you'll have to look at. Let's uh, put it down. So this speaks about lettering being applied to many objects right and four and three both of them speak about the ephemeral nature ephemeral means what short-lived nature and four speaks of just give me i'm just changing the color here okay four speaks of wax tablet and how it becomes ready to be reused very easily. And then three speaks of also generally ephemeral. The also was a key part here, which helped us to decide why three will come after four. Also generally ephemeral is this. So these two are ephemeral points. And one, use the connector in contrast and told about some practice where things were engraved on stones. So this is not ephemeral because they were engraved on stones and it was consciously monumental. So that is the flow of logic. Lettering on many objects, some were ephemeral in contrast, the others were staying for a long time. Okay, so two, four, three, one is the best order for this. Type two, if you're clear with why we are going with two, four, three, one for this question. Great, let's move to the next question. Try this one, you will have 90 seconds for this question.
we've already got a response for this question. Great, the time is up. Let's discuss this. His past experiences, okay, not a great way to start because it starts with a pronoun, his past experiences. So I should look for a noun to which this his is going to become the pronoun. So his past experiences has convinced him that, okay, I'm, I'm in the search of a noun here, so that I know what is the main subject. The idea of fasting was one of them. Although Mahatma Gandhi looks like this could be the starting sentence, because the full name is given, although Mahatma Gandhi, and the his that you see in the first one could refer to that. Gandhi had no doubt that has to come after you speak of Mahatma Gandhi, because the full names generally come before partial names. Had no doubt what, uh, whatever that his facts one had to touch their hearts okay now let's read the complete sentences although Mahatma Gandhi's Satyagraha in India followed the broad pattern of those in South Africa he also introduced several changes to suit new circumstances and needs the idea of fasting was one of them okay so this is giving me a clue he also introduced several changes to suit new circumstances idea of fasting was one of them Okay, so I can probably go with three, which introduces Mahatma Gandhi, the character here. Uh, and his Satyagraha in India followed the broad pattern of those in South Africa. He also introduced several changes. The idea of fasting was one of them. One of what? One of those several changes. So I can follow three with two. And became a subject of much debate throughout his life. Okay, let's look at this. His past experiences has convinced him that human actions sprang from both the head and the heart and that individuals could not be shaken out of complacency on issues of vital moral importance by sermons and arguments alone. Gandhi had no doubt whatever. Okay, now I would follow two with four. The reason is, you see here, the idea of fasting was one of them and became a subject of much debate. So people did debate about the idea of fasting. Gandhi had no doubt whatever, but see people did debate about fasting, but Gandhi never had a doubt on that. Okay, so after the debate point, you can follow, follow it up with the fourth one, because it connects this way. People had, I mean, people did debate, but Gandhi had no doubt whatever, that his fasts were not hunger strikes, nor forms of moral or emotional blackmail nor ways of evoking and exploiting others pity but forms of self-sacrifice and represented a perfectly moral method of action hey look at this you have perfectly moral method of action and then in statement one his past experiences convinced him that human actions you see the link there you see here the link is not coming to the beginning it's coming towards the end of a sentence to the beginning of the next sentence that's why it's important to read the entire sentences right so it represented a perfectly moral method of action his past experiences had convinced him that human actions sprang from both head and the heart and that individuals could not be shaken out of complacency on issues of vital moral importance by sermons and arguments alone one had to touch their heart oh 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 look at this both head and the heart is here one had to touch their hearts and activate their consciences and fasting was one of the most effective way to do so okay so i think we have got it three which speaks about gandhi bringing about several changes two speaks about one of those changes and he that change is fasting and it speaks about debate Four speaks about Gandhi never had a doubt, although people did debate. And towards the end, we see that it, uh, but forms of sac self sacrifice and represent a perfectly moral method of action. Human actions is being continued in four, which speaks about both the head and the heart. That's how you can reach individuals, not by sermons and arguments alone. One had to touch their hearts and activate. So, three, 
2 4 1 and 5 that is the order so if we look at flow of logic okay i think i just cleared that one so our order should be 3 which introduces the subject with this which is Mahatma Gandhi and speaks of several changes and then we move forward to two which speaks of one of them one of those changes and it also end with, ends with people debating right and four says Gandhi however had no doubt so that no doubt from Gandhi's side will continue this thing where people were debating but he had no doubt so three two four and then it ends with a perfectly moral method of action so one speaks about his past experiences convinced him that human actions so one continues with human actions and then you go to five which speaks of touching their hearts and touch something about hearts and head was discussed here so three two four one followed by five that should be the best order for this so three two four one five is the answer flow of logic is like this introduction one of them debating but gandhi did not have doubt because he believed human actions came from heart and head and the last one speaks of you need to touch their hearts so three to four one five is the answer type c if you're clear with how we solved this question awesome so i'm happy that more of you are getting the questions right and uh, okay while you are still in the video please make sure you do like this video it helps us to reach more students so click the like button once if you are really enjoying the session of course so let's go forward to the next question okay you have 90 seconds for this give it a shot I think this is an easy one. I'm expecting more of you to get this one right. Okay, the time's up. Let's see how to solve this one. Answers differ in different times and places and even in a single time and place there are multiple paths for knowledge seekers. That could be a start. We call them polymaths. I don't think that can start because this them is not defined in that case. Today, students, teachers and scholars generally recognize that their own education is partial at best and that even price discoveries may be rejected by others later on. Even that can start. Still, every once in a while, no. Still, every once in a while is not how it would start. What counts as knowledge? 
can definitely start. But now that we went through this, I am getting the clue. In the third statement, if you see, today's students, teachers and scholars generally recognize that their own education is partial at best. Still, every once in a while, less intellectually humble individuals arise who think that they know it all. Right? So today's students, teachers and scholars think that their education is partial at best. Still, although it, students, teachers and scholars think that their education is partial at best, still there are some people who think that they know it all, they can know it all, who seek to learn everything there is to know. We call them polymaths. Polymath is generally a person, poly stands for many, a person who knows a lot about a lot of things. Right? We call them polymaths. So this them could be this less intellectually humble individual. So I'm getting some connections going on here, right? Answers differ in different times and places and even in a single time and place there are multiple paths for knowledge seekers. What counts as knowledge? So I would start with what counts as knowledge. It starts with a question and then you have some explanations coming after that. So let's start with five. What counts as knowledge? And then you can follow it up with one, which is answers differ in different times and places. And even in a single time and place, there are multiple paths for knowledge seekers. So it, it tries to answer the initial question that was posed. And then today's students, teachers and scholars generally recognize that their own education is partial at best. Still, every once in a while, less intellectually humble individuals think that they can know it all. We call them who? these less intellectually humble individuals polymaths so five one three four two the flow of logic is like this this starts with a question on what counts as knowledge one tries to answer it in a subtle way answers differ in different ways and all that so answer to the question in a very subtle way three speaks about students teachers and scholars recognize that their own education is partial at best so it speaks of partial knowledge and four speaks of still that's a key connection here still some people think that they can know it all and two says we call them who is that them those less intellectually humble individuals who think they can know it all so two speaks about we call them polymaths so that's the connection question answer partial knowledge still some people think that they can know it all and we call them polymaths so five one three four two is the best order for this question type four if you're clear with how we solved question number four this is question number four Awesome. So we have one more question for our for our short burst of verbal ability this morning. Let me see how many of you can get that question right. Okay, this is the last question for today's session. You have 90 minutes, sorry, 90 seconds for this. This is definitely a tricky one. Let me see how many of you can get this right.
So far, no right answers, although we have got some responses. So I'm going to give you another 30 seconds to try this. This is a tricky one. Okay, some right answers are beginning to come. That's good. Okay, I think it's time to discuss. No wonder then that the idea, okay, that cannot be a good start because no wonder then, so no wonder what. So that cannot be a great start that the idea that we humans have especially created by God as its attractions. We do not have to resort to lurid far-fetched caricatures of our predecessors and cousins as shambling hairy brutes to accept that, accept what? Only a vanishing short time ago, as measured in the geological frame, our forebearers were without language or material culture. A fossil record that says that painting and carving arose only some 30,000 to 40,000 years ago and within a people who are physically identical to us either makes us feel especially ennobled by whatever trigger the origin of technology and the culture that has given us Rembrandt, Turner and all these people and Shakespeare or it leaves us totally humbled. While dinosaurs belong to the distant past, Homo erectus and Homo whatever, on the other hand, are faintly alarming in every sense being far too close. Look at this. We have this far too close for comfort here. And here we see we do not have to resort to lurid far-fetched caricatures of our predecessors and cousins. So if you look at this, it says while dinosaurs belong to distant past, these Homo erectus and Homo deandered that I, I don't know how exactly this is called. On the other hand, are faintly alarming. Why is it alarming? In every sense, being far too close for comfort. They are too close to us in terms of when they were there. They are not too dis I mean too far away in the past. Right? Far too close for comfort. We do not have to resort to lurid, far-fetched caricatures of our predecessors and cousins as shambling hairy brutes to accept that. Accept what? That they are far too close for comfort. Okay, so you, don't, you do not have to look at far-fetched uh, caricatures. They are actually pretty close in terms of how long back they were also there. Right? So I would put four and I would follow that up with two. We do not have to resort to lurid far-fetched caricatures because they are too close. Harry Brutes to accept that only a vanishing short time ago as measured in the geological frame, our forebearers were without language or material culture. So in a very short period of time itself, if you see, maybe you don't have to go millions of years back. Okay. A fossil record that says that painting and carving arose only some 30,000. So this actually builds on the fact that you don't have to go too much into the history. So a fossil record that says that painting and carving arose only some 30,000 to 40,000 years ago and within a people who are physically identical to us either makes us feel specially ennobled by whatever triggered the origin of technology and a culture that has given us all these people or it leaves us totally humbled. Now this totally humbled can actually lead to this no wonder then. See 30,000 to 40,000 years ago only people even started painting and carving. But whatever triggered this technology because technology and culture because of that we have improved drastically right so that makes us feel totally humbled in terms of how things have changed around us so no wonder then because of these changes and we feel totally humbled that the idea that we humans were specially created by god has its attraction because it's kind of magical right 30000 to 40000 years only people year ago only people started painting and carving and suddenly technology and culture came and we have improved so much so no wonder then that the idea that we humans were specially created by god had its attraction because this transformation was magical so i would go with four two two speaks about you don't have to resort to far fetched caricatures and all that and three says a fossil record of only some 30,000 to 40,000 years ago, if you go and see, you'll be able to see that you know, people were there 
almost physically identical to us and suddenly something triggered techno technology and culture and then you know, so many things came up and it leaves us totally humbled because of that the idea that we humans were especially created by god had its attraction so four two three and one that would be the best order here so the flow of logic is like this four starts with that uh, it's fairly alarming that in every sense these were far too close so it speaks about these were far too close to us you don't have to go millions of years back and two says it it continues on that you don't have to resort to lurid far-fetched caricatures to understand that because a vanishingly short time ago you can see that as mentioned in geological frame our forebears were without language and material culture so vanishingly short time ago you don't have to go too much into the past to find out so this says within a short time into the history you will be able to find that our forebears were without language and material and three bulls on the short time it says only some 30,000 to 40,000 years ago people I mean you can see paintings and carvings and it ends with suddenly there was some kind of you know, revolution that came about in technology and culture and all these things happen and it leaves us totally humbled or ennobled so it says about the transformations that happened in terms of technology and culture it says we are humble and one says probably because of that the idea that humans were specially created by god had its attraction so god's creation idea had its attraction because of the magical transformation we saw in terms of technology and culture so that is a flow of idea far too close in a very short time you'll be able to see and the short time is 30 to 40 years itself people who are physically identical to us and then that revolution came it leaves us humbled hence the idea of god's creation started gaining traction okay so four two three one is the best order for this type five if you are clear with why we are going with four two three one uh, i could see a lot of you actually got it right very good those of you who got this question right you are thinking in the right direction great so that was our short session on paragraph jumbles without options so tomorrow we are going to have a session on paragraph jumbles with odd man out so we are going to find out those questions how to deal with those questions when you have to remove that one sentence which will not fit into the rest of the paragraph so i'll catch up with you guys in that session if you uh, liked the session make sure you subscribe to the channel and do click the like button it helps us to reach more students have a good day guys i'll catch up with you guys in tomorrow's session